our beloved pastor, will give us the encouragement that reminds us of who and what we are. And I promise you, you will have an assignment which will help to propel you along the path of life. Reverend John Scott, please come forward. Thank you, friend. Wow. Just breathe for a moment so that breath of God within us can just fill our central nervous system and take us to a point of stillness that allows us to feel and to hear that still small voice which says, follow me. I can't tell you. That amid the, the din and the roar of motorcycles on the street and delivery trucks thundering by, none of it can touch you if you go within and allow that breath of God which breathed you from you were conceived to breathe your life to be your life and to allow you to reach out and touch every single person with whom you come into contact. And so this morning's encouragement is about reaching out. The power of reaching out. And you know, friends, a lot of people say, well, I'm not kind of a reaching out kind of person. I'm shy. <laughs> they will also tell you though, but that's only till I get to know you. And then when I know you, me broke out. But how do you get to know someone, my friends? How do you establish a relationship that is intimate? Because you see, intimacy really can be translated as, as into me see. Look, look, look here within this, this frame that has clothed my spirit beats the heart given to me by the creator as an instrument through which I can love you. As an instrument through which I can love you. As an instrument through which I can love you. Love every person who has stood for truth this morning by joining our spiritual community can love the people who may appear to be unloving and unlovable and remind myself that they are still the sons and daughters of the infinite invisible, members of a royal household that is adored by the king. And so this kingdom which Jesus the master said was at hand is really, my friends, a kingdom, for we are kindred. When we pray the Lord's Prayer and we say, Our Father, we're talking about our Papa. We're not talking about something that is remote from us. We're talking about our Father, and that makes us brothers and sisters. Oh, my God. And so, this center for spiritual living if you find it difficult to, to reach out, is really a safe place where you can practice what we have come here to do, which is to reach out and bond and share and lift up our brothers and our sisters all across the globe. And you know, friends, A lot of times, let me talk for the, the males of the species for a moment. We guys, you know, we find it very difficult to say those three little words, I love you. Except, of course, we, it's in the bedroom. And that's another kind of expression. <laughs> you know, we can all do that up to a certain age. But I can't tell you. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, you know, some, <laughs> yes. Um, 
that's only one kind of love though, isn't it? I'm talking about the universal love. And you know, we find it so hard to express it that I never forget, and the more I've been, I've been doing this ministry, the more I've, I've come to realize it. Here in Jamaica, it may be so elsewhere, but let me just talk about the Jamaican experience for a moment. You know, we got socialized, most of us guys, big boys don't cry. You know, you've got to be tough. And at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Facility, which is the euphemism we use for the prison downtown, <laughs> I had an experience in one of our workshops, one of the classes of our, you know, we do, we do 12 classes, a series. And I had an experience because there was a man in that cohort who was about 40 years old. And he shared his experience, his traumatic experience with an alcoholic father who used to just get drunk and beat him for no reason at all or for the slightest reason. And one evening when he was about 13, he was already asleep in his bed and his father came home drunk as usual and hauled him out of the bed by the scuff of his neck and roared, the only one man in this house, yeah, you know, there's only one man in this house, you know, you never know, somebody tell you, say, you mustn't whistle. Only one man in here can whistle, and it's me. So the little boy whimpered, I wasn't whistling, Papa, I wasn't whistling. So he said, what? You wasn't whistling, so on top of whistling, you are lying to me. And the next door neighbor, hearing the commotion, came over and said, Master Charlie, the picnic wasn't whistling, you know, it was me picking up the washing, and me was whistling. Breathe on me, breath of God. Wow. And when the father heard it, he stormed out of the, out of the room. Now, friends, when men who are socialized not to express emotions go out on a limb and express their feelings in front of other men, you know, you know for me, that is a pivotal moment. And this guy with tears streaming down his face, said, you know what hurt me? You know what really hurt me more than the beating? That bad word, bad word man, never even say I'm sorry when he found out it wasn't me he was whistling. No. There was another person in the, in the group, a young man in his 20s, and he had sat listening to that story with his hands buried in his face. Because, of course, big boys don't cry and somebody must not say, I'm I wet. And he looked up and he said, no feel no way, I am. Uh, I tell you something. And with that, the tears began to, to fall. And you know me, I'm a, I'm a baller already. So I don't even shame, I just let it flood the place. He said, Mac, I tell you something. I would give anything to have known my father even if it did mean saying, come home every evening and kill me with licks. Mm. Wow. Wow. Can we find today those words? I love it. To reach out to people from who we have grown our love and our friends, people who have not lived up to our high standards of what they should be or how they should be the world, to reach out to people who are not, in our opinion, on the same level, either intellectually or financially or socially or politically or whatever, Lee, can we reach out? Because that is what is one of the core values of this Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone whom we come into contact. And new members, I want to tell you something. You know, say, when you're married, tongue and teeth will meet. You will disagree with me. You will disagree with other members of the Temple of Light family. And that is good because if we all sat around and said, amen, amen, I could have built an ark. <laughs> I know everybody would have said, amen, amen. But the reason that we have opposition and that there is value in it, is that it causes us to rethink our position. But I want to encourage you, don't walk away from the thing that has changed your life. 
say something to somebody. I want us in the new move forward for as we implement our strategic plan to begin to have what I call village circles. Just groups of people who sit in a circle and share what works for them, what doesn't work for them in the church. How, they, how is it going? How is, it, how is the truth demonstrating in my life? Boy, Reverend John, I did want a black SUV. I may get a red one, but thank, thank you, God, all the same. Reach out, my friends. You know, it's not just the dysfunctional parents who fa have a hard time telling, saying, I love you, too. There's a lovely story by author, um, I think his name is Gene Bedley in the original Chicken Soup for the Soul book. And he talks about his experience with his son, Tim. And I'll just tell you very quickly, uh, because it's, it's another example of how hard we find it to say those magic words. So this father had been reading one of these self help, help books that insisted that one of the most important things parents can do is say those three words to their children. And so he, he was moved by it. He, was, he, you know, he resonated with what the book was saying. And his son was upstairs, his 18-year-old son was upstairs on his drum set um, playing. And the father said, I'm going to go up and say this to him. So the father went upstairs and knocked on the door. No answer, of course, because the drums were, were, were um, raising a racket. And so he pushed the door and went in, and the son looked up, took off his earphones, and he said, hi, son, you have a minute? And the father said, yes, son, I always have a minute. The, the son said, yes, dad, I always have a minute for you. And the father said, well, I just came to tell you that I love the way you play the drums. Said, thank you, Dad. That's really, that's really wonderful. I'm so glad, to, uh, glad, glad to, to get that uh, appreciation. And down the stairs, the father went. And halfway down, he said, but that's not what I went upstairs to say. I went up to say the three words, and I didn't say it. I'm going back up there. So back up the stairs he goes, and he knocks back on the door. And he says, son, you have another minute? And the son says, yes, Dad, I always have a minute for you. He said, well, son. I really came upstairs to tell you something, but I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't quite say it, and I, I, I want to say it. He said, yes, Dad, go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. He said, well, I just want you to know how much your mother and I love you. <laughs> down the stairs he goes, and halfway down the stairs he said, but you know, say it. <laughs> you know, you know, say it. Go on, back up. So back up he goes, and knocks again and the son says don't let me let me guess yes it's yes dad i have a minute so the father went in and said look here i need to share with you this is the third time i'm going to make an effort and here it is i just want to say i love you son take off his earphones turn down the music and said dad you've been going to a workshop or to the <laughs> Temple of Light. <laughs> that wasn't the story, but I put that in. Because the teenager was so surprised to get that three words said to him without any icing on the cake, just purely and simply, I love you. And he said, Dad, I really want to thank you for just saying it. And so, my friends, my assignment for you, should you decide to undertake it, is to just say it. Reach out to someone who you don't know this week. It can be somebody in the supermarket in the line behind you. It can be somebody in the dentist's office while you're waiting. Um, just say something to make a connection. In a moment, with the person who is in that moment. Because you see, that moment is all we have, my friends. Nobody knows what the next moment will bring us. But in this moment, you are all in this moment with me. And in this moment, I want to say, I really love you. And each one of you have made my journey 
so beautiful, so wonderful, so exciting. Sometimes I tear out my hair, sometimes I lose sleep. But each of you have enriched my life in such a way. I just want to say, I love you. I really love you. One person said, I love you, so thank you. What, you went to a workshop or you've been coming to the Temple of Light? <laughs> yeah. It's not easy to do, but the more you practice reaching out, the easier it becomes and the more fulfilled you feel. I've lost where I am on this, but um, I just want to wrap up by saying, asking you to repeat with me, God in me is unified with God in all. Can we say that? God, God in, in me is, is unified, unified with God, God in all. all. The great love which I now feel for the world is the love of God. The, the great, great love which, which I now feel for the world is the love of God. I reach out and offer it freely. I reach, reach out and, and offer it freely. freely. I treat every encounter as a divine intervention. I treat every encounter as a divine intervention. I'll walk with God from this day on. I'll walk with God from this day on. Over the end of writings, I think what's important to me more than anything else that night is that only you understand the real meaning and purpose of life is you in the pearl of your life, which is the love that you brought with you into this incarnation to share with others. Thank you for being in my life. God loves you, and so do I. Namaste. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love you, Reverend John. Let's say it. I love you, Reverend. John, wow, what a warm and heartfelt sharing. Get over the reluctance and the shyness and the hesitation. Reach out to someone, each one, and let them hear those beautiful three words. I love you. Coming from the heart, sincerely because that is where the love starts. Reverend John, thank you for reminding us that sometimes men hesitate to say I love you. I don't have that problem. <laughs> I love it, right? So please remember these words and remember you can go onto the World Wide Web by YouTube and our Facebook page to hear this all over again and to share it. Thank you, thank you, Reverend John.